A federal investigation is underway this morning after a protester was critically injured in downtown Portland Saturday night. So a federal officer fired what they call an impact device and it hit a young man in the head. You're gonna see it in just a second. Now, Portland police have not said really anything about that specific incident, but they are holding a press conference today. Mayor Ted Wheeler wrote a statement on Twitter last night. It reads in part, quote, I spoke with U.S. Attorney Bill Williams about the injuries and learned that the U.S. Marshal Service will be conducting a full investigation. He went on to say, we must end this nightly violence in Portland. Lives are at stake. KGW's Tim Gordon brings us reaction from other elected leaders, and we have a warning for you. This story contains graphic video that may be difficult for some viewers to watch. Another night of chaos. Clashes Saturday night between protesters and federal officers nearly killed a man. We want to warn you, the video we're about to show you is graphic. This shows the aftermath when protesters carried away 26-year-old Donovan LaBella, as people on social media have identified him. Immediately after LaBella is hit, others surround him and move him back. You can see the head wound that's bleeding and more blood on the sidewalk where he dropped. Prior to being shot by a federal officer with an impact munition, LaBella had gently kicked a smoke canister that landed near him and had both hands up holding a loudspeaker. We asked for a response about what happened and have not heard back from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. It is the agency in charge of federal officers that President Trump just praised for their policing of crowds in several cities, including Portland. City Commissioner Chloe Udaly told the Oregonian, quote, it's unfortunate that Trump cares more about protecting monuments and buildings than he does people's lives and constitutional rights. We didn't invite or ask for this overblown intervention by the federal government. Donovan LaBella was in critical condition on Sunday at Legacy Emanuel Medical Center. His mother telling OPB he has facial and skull fractures, but is responding to doctors. Both U.S. senators from Oregon are speaking out. Senior Senator Ron Wyden tweeting, quote, The consequences of Donald Trump unilaterally dispatching federal law enforcement into U.S. cities played out in Portland with a peaceful protester shot in the head. Trump and Homeland Security must now answer why federal officers are acting like an occupying Army. And Governor Kate Brown wrote, in part, the events of last night at the federal courthouse were the tragic and avoidable result of President Donald Trump for weeks continuing to push for force and violence in response to protests. And from City Commissioner Joanne Hardesty, the last line of a long, strong statement, quote, we have had more than enough. The federal troops need to withdraw immediately. And after that, we have the hard task of picking up the pieces and responding to what the public and this movement asks of us. That was Tim Gordon reporting. Mayor Wheeler also said he is calling on the federal government to adhere to the same directives as Portland police when it comes to crowd control munitions. Meanwhile, Seattle's mayor could face a recall election for her handling of protests in that city. A judge approved a petition for it over the weekend. The group behind the petition has 180 days to collect more than 50,000 valid signatures. If they get them, Mayor Jenny Durkin could be recalled by city voters in a special election. Mayor Durkin has faced criticism from Seattle residents in recent weeks for her handling of the autonomous zone set up by protesters in the Capitol Hill neighborhood. Protesters also accused her of violating their civil rights by authorizing police use tear gas on crowds during demonstrations. Back here in Portland, the nightly protests continue downtown, but we also continue to see daily nonviolent demonstrations in support of Black Lives Matter. A group supporting that movement gathered yesterday at Wallace Park in Northwest Portland. The event was family oriented. There was a youth led march and we also heard from one of the demonstrations, young organizers. I'll say it's never too early to be a part of the revolution. And, you know, I'll say to our elders too, it's never too late. There was also a youth led march against racism and police brutality over the weekend in Beaverton. The Beaverton School District tweeted out this video we're showing you right now. This march was organized by the Black Student Union at Mountainside High School. All right, we want to update you on some of the latest coronavirus numbers reported over the weekend in Oregon. So the state reported 409 new cases on Saturday, but there is some context that comes with that new number. 
The Oregon Health Authority transitioned to a new reporting system last week, so some cases from last Thursday were included in those Saturday numbers. That being said, Sunday, yesterday, brought another 332 new cases, and that brings the total cases in Oregon since the start of the pandemic to more than 12,000. Health officials are actually estimating about 1,100 people a day are contracting the virus, but many of them are not getting diagnosed. Let's take a look at this graphic now. This shows hospitalizations. We have seen a slight uptick recently, but still the daily totals in terms of hospitalizations have remained relatively low throughout the pandemic. All right, Nina, we have not been able to say this for the past few months here on Sunrise, but here we go. The Portland Timbers are back in action tonight. Yeah, it feels good, right? They'll play the LA Galaxy at the Disney World Resort in Orlando, where Major League Soccer has its own isolation style bubble, much like the NBA. So the teams are playing in a tournament and to make it juicier, players will be competing for an additional bonus in a million dollar prize pool and a spot in next year's CONCAFA Champions League. Staying healthy in this pandemic is the obvious priority, but this event has already been impacted by COVID-19. Two teams have already been sent home because of a large number of positive test results. Here's Timbers head coach Giovanni Savrese on how the team is handling it. The most important part has been what teams have done in their own markets. I think that's crucial. That's why I feel very proud of our players in how they conduct themselves in, in Portland. And I think that's a key factor. Uh, and, and we have to continue to, to do that. And there was always a, a level of, of concern, which I think it is important because when you don't have concern, you then, you know, put your guard down. Tonight's match is at 730 on FS1. Fans are not allowed to attend. So if you hear that the Timbers are back in action, you probably would assume that the Timbers Army is excited about this, right? Well, take a look at this. Just last month, the Army posted a tweet calling the MLS's back tournament dangerous and unnecessary. And they followed that up last Thursday, calling on Major League Soccer to reconsider the tournament, quote, in the interest of the physical health and mental well-being of players and support staff. We invited leaders with the Timbers Army to join us here on Sunrise this morning to talk about those concerns, but they replied with an email saying the Army has no further comments at this time.